Is this where we're gonna, we're gonna go? Yeah. All right. You call it. What do you say we get set up? Yeah. All right, let's get set up. Hello, folks. Want to join Parker and I on a little bit of a winter outside day in the woods? Come out. All right, buddy, look what we got here. Just in case we do get a couple squirrels and to warm up, we want to get a fire going, right? Yeah. Just right now. Now, here is a nice open space for a fire right by our squirrel hunting grounds. Not really any branches straight above our head. And look at this. Look what I found. What do you say we get some of these rocks and make a fire ring? Yeah. Okay. All right. And we'll put our fire ring right here. All right. We don't need a big fire. It's probably only about five or six will do. All right, Parker. Yeah. It's really wet out. Not only did we have two days of rain and a couple days of snow melt, but everything is soaked. And you're going to start a fire how I taught you on flint and steel, right? Mm -hmm. So, how do you start? How did I teach you how to start a fire in the woods when it's snowy and wet and all the woods wet and everything else with flint and steel? What's birch the first bark. thing you do? Hmm? Birch bark. Birch bark. Good. Let's go find a birch tree. Hey, Parker, see this dead branch next to you? Yeah. i take it off of that. Look at all that. Perfect. What should we do next before we start our bird's nest? We need to get kindling. We need to get a pile of kindling, don't we? Yes. Let's uh, break up and get a pile of kindling, okay? We have kindling gathered. We have something for our birch bark. Let's start making a bird's nest out of this birch bark, okay? You gotta tear it apart in little pieces. We're gonna light it with my flint and steel and necklace and then slowly add sticks. Let's see it done. Let's see if you can do it. Just like I taught you. I did it at the house <laughs> downstairs. So remember, the more practice you get, the easier it'll become. Yeah. So what you were doing, buddy, is like this. Like this, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is gonna be hard to do. What you wanna do is have it on the opposite angle. Oh, See? yeah. You want me to do it? I got it. You got it? Okay, but you see how you do it against the grain? Yeah. That will get the spark you need. And then it's just about aiming it down in that pile, okay? Okay. So do it against the grain, and then do it down here because it's gotta be, you want that spark to fly right into that bird's nest. Okay. Okay? Ooh, I see an ember. What the heck? Almost. Almost there. Just gonna aim it right. 
Everybody's nest is falling apart. Ooh, that was it. That was it. Yep, it's starting. One good one, and you got it in that bird's nest. Hey, you're going opposite again. Yeah, there you go. That was it. That was it. Oh, you had it. I know you should do it. Okay, here. Sparks flying. Now, we don't want to starve out the fire, right? Exactly. Especially with all this wood being wet. That's a lot of work to get it going. I think in the summertime, when things are a little drier, we can try the bow way, huh? Yeah. What I'm doing is I'm making as much air in this as possible. I'm not trying to tighten it up because they're all wet and they're going to need some drying time. But you want the air to really flow through there down to that birch. And that should get us a decent fire going for when we get a squirrel. Sound good? Sounds good. See how she goes. Well, and in the northern woods where you got birch trees, that's how you do a fire. When it's really wet and it's really snowy, you can always use birch bark. Get a little bird's nest going on. Now we got a fire for keeping warm and cooking our squirrels for the day. And it's a safe one. When it comes to being out in the woods, safety is number one. The last thing you want to do is burn down a woods. If you don't know how to do a fire safe, if you don't even know the five basic kinds of fires, you shouldn't even be doing this, but that's why I'm out here teaching you, buddy. So we got a good fire. While that's going, let's set up for squirrel hunting. All right. All right. What you doing, Parky? What'd you find for part of our meal? That mushroom. Ooh, yes you did, and that's a fungus. That grows out of the tumors of trees, but it's edible for humans, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You gonna be able to go get that? Well, All right. You remember the climbing method I taught you? Which one? <laughs> Uh-huh. You usually need a real saw to cut it off. I don't think you're going to be able to do it. We don't got the tools or a hatchet or something. But we'll know where it is for next time, won't we? Yeah. But that, even though it looks like a tree tumor with bark around it, that's an edible mushroom. It's an edible fungus. Yeah. It's a good disguise. Good disguise. Most people would never know. Safety glasses. Yeah. What are you doing? Making tongs. Making tongs? Yeah. All right. Hey, do you hate this? Yeah. Do you think it's should be your job to clean it up? No. But are you going to clean it up? Uh, Why? Because we don't like littering. Even if other people do it? Yeah. It's nice. And you always leave your place nicer than when you found it, right? Yes. Even if some piece of freaking garbage left garbage out here. Mm 
right? Yeah. Um, we're gonna pick up this trash that some person left out. Um, it's not, they shouldn't have, and they should have cleaned it up and took it to the dump, but yes, we are, so. It kind of makes me mad that someone would just litter the island because it's such a beautiful place here, so. If I found out who this moron was, I'd have my dad punch him in the face, so. What is this? Gas tank. Oh. Is there any gas in it? Nope, just water. Well, let's grab some stuff and start taking him to the car. At least the gas tank and stuff. I know we can't grab it all because there's another pile here. But let's just grab the gas tank and those pans, okay? Why do you throw away this pan? I don't know. I don't know. People throw away good, perfectly good stuff, and I just don't get it. I don't get it. They like, there's people, there's people that remodel their house almost every year just because they need it new, and they throw away just perfectly good material. It just drives me freaking nuts. Bunch of stuff under here too. Oh my god! It's a trash pile, huh? Well, we're going to have to come back with a truck. So let's at least get the big stuff, okay? It's full of ice, isn't it? What? It's ice, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, punch him in the face, Dad. Punch him in the face. These northern woods, these Beaver Island woods are beautiful. Even in the beginning of winter. But here's my problem. Everywhere I go, I see this garbage. There's somebody's fuel tank that they just left out here, plastic, a couple plastic pots, cooking pans, whatever the hell this bracket is. Everywhere I go, even here on Beaver Island, I find human garbage. Now these have been left here for a long time, I'm sure. This is a place that not too many, we're in a place right now where not too many people ever go to. So these have probably been left for a while. But this kind of shit makes me freaking nuts. Just absolutely nuts. This is... <sighs> Parker and I will be picking all this up, but just... There's just no excuse for this garbage. This is a real piece of crap that does this kind of stuff. Real piece of crap. Ooh, and the fire's looking good. It's still going. We didn't want a lot of smoke and we don't want a big fire, so that is absolutely perfect. We're just going to keep a good amount of coals going for now. All right, buddy. How's it looking? Fire's looking good. Almost got a fungus. I'm just... Hey Parker, now that you're back, let me show you something. Come here. Look what I found. I brought over. I went out in the woods searching too. And I went over to the human freaking junk pile that's over there. And I found a couple buckets and flower planters that are still in decent shape that number one, we'll take home with us and use. The ones that aren't trash. And number two, we can sit on. Oh, yeah. I went looking for logs that we can sit on. and said I found these, so. Nice. What do you think? It's good. A little bit of active since you've been gone squirrel hunting, huh? I got a little lost. But Did you? Yeah, I was like, I know that they're that way. So, we're just, so we went like, I went like around until I saw the van and then I cut over and then just followed the tire tracks. Okay. I like the saws on these because they cut. I was only cutting for a little bit and it already got that far. Nice. Yeah. Good tool then, huh? Oh yeah. Here's a deer trail right here, buddy. Can you see it? Yeah. We're kind of on right where it yeah, Here's the normal layer of poop. Pretty fresh. So I just made these tongs. Um, I saw someone make it out from a TV show. I was like, oh, I tried it. I made like three pairs. Boom, it's got to be a live branch, right? Yes. So you get that bendability? Yeah. And mm. you're using that for your reindeer moss? Yeah. And, he, and you want me to try the reindeer moss, right? Yes, I do. 
And you say when it's moist, it tastes like mushrooms? It tastes like a funky, sourish kind of mushroom. And when it's not moist, what does it taste like? Dry nastiness. Okay, is this moist or not? It's ish. It's ish? It's ish. All right, let me try it. I will tell you from eating that, buddy, mm -hmm. that I'm pretty sure we should have brought some butter. <laughs> I bet you this stuff would taste really good in butter. So you're cooking it on the rocks on the side there? Yeah. Kind of giving it a smoky flavor? I can't wait to try it after you cook it. What's that? You can hydrate it in water. Well, I did bring some coffee for this one. <laughs> but I'll give it a shot. Get some of this stuff out of here. Looks like there's a bug. <laughs> um, extra protein. No, nah, it's not a bug. All right. It's kind of the aftertaste. Not bad. It tastes like kale. It's dry. You get a little sand grid in there too. Mm -hmm. It tastes like kale. It tastes like nothing. And this has got nutrients, huh? Mm-hmm. And so you can you can eat this all winter mm -hmm. as long as you can find it. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's a pretty smart idea with them tongs, man. Thank you. I'm telling you, you should have your own YouTube channel. Kid as smart as you and knows as much about surviving in the woods as you do. I think a lot of the other kids would watch it. Especially them city boys. <laughs> Did I tell you the joke about the city boy and the country boy? So, city boy and country boy, they go out in the woods, go for a hike, right? Uh -huh. And the country boy's talking to the city boy and he says, <laughs> So what are you going to do if you see a bear? The city boy says, well, hell, I'm going to run. Right? Mm -hmm. Country boys just starts laughing. Man, see, that's what's wrong with you city folk. You don't know any better. You can't outrun a bear. And the city boy says, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just got to outrun you. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? All I know is instead of the concrete jungle, we spend our days in, the jungle. in very, very, very Peace and quiet. Cooking what we can find and what we can hunt. Too bad the squirrels aren't out today. Yeah? Probably gonna have, it's definitely gonna be super dry. It will be dry. The more you cook things, the more moisture it comes out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Add heat, take away moisture. Kind of like a steak well done steak is not a steak because you done cooked all the taste out of it you cooked all the moisture out of it <laughs> i'll do it for people like your sister there ain't much things that i don't like more than overcooking a steak <laughs> how'd you like your uncle mike's venison oh i love that it was did good. you love it yeah. you should give him a shout out he watches these. He does? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I really, it was mm, delicious. Good venison, huh? Oh, this yeah. is the done stuff? Yes. It's, I think it's dry. Yeah. Turn it into a seasoning. <laughs> Turn it into a seasoning. Yeah. And then you want me to eat, this would be like eating dry oregano. You want me to eat dry oregano? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just because it's funny? Yeah. See, I think we should have brought butter if you were going to cook this stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's like eating dry oregano. <laughs> I do gotta admit though, it does taste better, even though it's drier. Mm -hmm. I don't like the dryness. Too dry. Like I said, it's like buying dragged or dry oregano or parsley out of the store and then just eating the dry leaves, you know? Yeah. But if it, this has some kind of moisture and it was cooked, because it does taste better mm -hmm. cooked. It does taste better cooked. It's just the dryness now. So if um yeah, I think if we had something like a sauce or something to saute it or butter or something like yeah. that, you know, if we had killed the squirrel, we could uh cook down the squirrel fat. Mm -hmm. That oh, would have yeah. been. I think I would have like you know whatever little squirrel fat there is, we could have put that in there and had some nice greens with the squirrel because that that fat juice would have given us a really good good yeah. flavor and a good saute. 
Well, I could do this. I think you know? I have an idea. What's your idea? Snow on a leaf? Yeah. You don't think the leaf's gonna burn up? It might. And hopefully it won't dry out the leaves and get it on fire real quick, right? Yes. If it does, we can just take it off. And... Well, let's ah! see. Throw some snow. You can put it on a rock, right between rocks? Yeah, probably. Now I thought you this. When you're getting wood like this, you always want stuff that's standing up. Because if it's standing up, from snow melt on down or raining, everything drips off, and so these will tend to be dry. Know what I mean? <laughs> So you always want the stuff that's standing up over the ground, especially when you're in a wet climate like the north. And we don't need big logs, just a small fire, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were in like survival mode in today's times, you would um, want a good bed of coals, but you'd want wet wood. Right, because that's going to get all this like smoke. It's, a, it's the water is going to get out with the heat, and it's going to basically leave a trail where you're at. You know what I mean? And so you'd want really wet wood um, after you get a good bed of coals um, to signal. In the olden days, though, like let's say out west, you know where we're from, Wyoming. In the olden days, you actually wouldn't want wet wood. You'd want it as dry as possible, as small as possible, and to burn as hot and cleanly as possible. And the reason is, is because especially out in like the prairies. That is 10 miles away, somebody can see you as a marker. And that means you're about to be prey, either to an animal or to one of the most dangerous animal in the world, the humans, um, whether from bandits or whatever. Uh, but this was a marker of where you were at. And so in the olden days, you would actually want to build fires that don't have smoke. But nowadays, you'd be, if you were in a survival situation, you'd want to build fires with smoke so people could find you. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, after these logs burn down, I think we should head home. I'm getting hungry. Getting hungry? Yeah, I didn't eat breakfast, so. Hey, should have got a couple squirrels, huh? Should have. They're just not out. I don't know what's wrong with them. They know that we're coming. Um, mm. I was just carving down this part, and I, and I, I had my hand right here. Are you okay? Let's see. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, I didn't even notice that I cut myself. It's so sharp. Okay. Now, if we were in survival mode, that could be a killer, couldn't it? Yeah, infection. So, what would you do for that wound? Well, there's a couple things. You can find um, a plant that treats it, or you can um, cover it with something to make but you, sure. But what if you cover it with something and there's a lot of bacteria in there? I don't know. So I would boil some snow. Oh, yeah. And clean it out really good. Make sense? Yeah. Is it a deep cut? Let's see. Let's see. Is it deep? No. It's just a little slice right, under. Got away with that one, huh? Yeah. And so you weren't doing my safety rule. What is that? I was. I went like this, and then it slid down. So, not my fault. <laughs> What's the safety rule? Let's repeat it. Cut towards your body. Buddy, not your body. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, okay? Alright. Still We shot. never ever ever want to go hunting and come back with an injury if we can help it, can't do we? Yep. Yeah. Still shocked I didn't feel it though. Be cool. You didn't feel it? No. It's a sharp knife. So how my dad taught me, my brother, and my sister is to um hunt for meat and not for sport and just for killing. So we're not going to go shoot up the nest. It's a beautiful day. Um, the weather's been kind of acting up quite a bit. Like, um, we had two giant snowstorms, and most of this one has already um, washed away. So, yeah. But it's still really beautiful and good time to go out.
What is the best way right now you think to put out this fire? Throw Without snow the on it. Throw snow on it? Yeah. Let's get to it. Okay. Snowball fight. All right, our fire ring is out. Got some choice words for that person. <laughs> oh, I hate people like that. We say we get out of here. Say that again. It is so cold. It's cold out. I think it's right about freezing. Right about zero degrees Celsius and uh, right about 32 probably, maybe a couple degrees colder Fahrenheit. I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> my, my fingers are a little numb. My feet aren't bad though, but I got them old good boots that I got at the mine, you know, and I used to work outside in Wyoming all night. These, my toes are warm, but... That's the best part. If your toes are warm, you can deal with the rest of the stuff. Your toes and your core is what you want to keep warm. Um, so we didn't see anything besides that one angry bird. Um, we just hung around the campfire, saw some um, mushrooms. And even though we didn't get anything, it was still a fun time. It's fun to be out in the woods and stuff. See, buddy, I told you I'd find our way out. Always do. 